All right, so let's suppose you're looking down from above into this rectangular shaped room, right? You're seeing the carpet here on the floor. And let's suppose there's a robot in this room and the robot is moving along some path that might look like so. And what I'd like to do is look at the position of, of the robot at some specific time. Let's say at this specific time, this robot is right here at the green dot. And how would I represent that position of the robot at that time? So I'm going to propose that we represent the position of this robot with a vector. First thing we have to do is define a, an origin. I'm going to put this into the southwest corner of the room. And then the vector corresponding to the position of the robot is simply, well, you can think of it as an arrow whose tail is at the origin and the head of this arrow goes up to the location of the robot at this specific time. You've probably been told that a vector is something with a magnitude and a direction. Well, here's its magnitude, that length of the vector, or in other words, the distance of the robot from the origin, and its direction is this direction of, of the arrow. So from here, I, I'm hoping you can see that it's possible to represent this position as this vector, as this arrow with a, with a magnitude and a direction. And I think that it's cool as long as you allow for one more possibility. Let's suppose the robot is over here. Let's suppose that, that it's right at the origin. So if I draw a, an arrow from the origin to the robot, my arrow is going to have zero length. I guess that's okay. But it's not going to have any direction, right? Hmm. Hmm. So, ooh. so if we're going to call position a vector, we have to make sure our vector allows for or accommodates a zero vector. As long as it accommodates a zero vector, then I'm okay with it. We can we can call position a vector. So let's do it that way, where zero is a possibility. All right. So I'm returning to this picture right here, where the the robot is over here, and and I'm representing its position by a vector. I'm calling the position vector r. I'm not sure why I call it r, but it's common to call the position vector r. And since it's a vector, I'm putting an arrow over it to indicate that this r here is my position vector. And I told you a moment ago that this robot is moving, right? So here's the position at one specific time. So I'll indicate this time as t0. Here's the position of the robot at time t0. Now I'd like to perform a little thought experiment. Let's suppose between this time t0 and a later time t1, maybe three seconds later, I don't know. Let's suppose between these two times the robot moves a distance of two meters. What would the position vector at this new time be? Well, I'd like to write this new position vector, so r at time t1. I'd like to write it as r at time t0 plus the two meters. All right, so how does this sound? Does it make sense? I'm pausing here. I'm kind of hoping you see that there's a problem with this. There's a problem with this, isn't there? This r at t0, this thing is a vector. r at t0, this thing has magnitude and it has direction. Again, it's a vector. But what is the two meters here? The two meters has a length, right? It's a, it's a length. It has a magnitude, if you will, but it doesn't have a direction. It's not a vector. It's just a number. It's something we might call a scalar. And if I try to add the vector to the scalar, what does that even mean? It means the new vector, at least I'm, the way I'm trying to write this, is the new vector is equal to the old vector plus two meters but two meters in which direction? The new position vector can be anywhere on this radius of two meters, right? So I'm hoping you see a problem with this. I cannot add a vector, I cannot add a vector and a scalar together. It's impossible, it makes no sense mathematically. And it makes no sense physically. It makes no sense in terms of the reality of the position of the robot in the room. So we never add a vector and a scalar together. No, it's prohibited, forbidden. And that's why I'm being very careful when I write vectors, I put arrows over them. When I write 
things that are not vectors. I don't put arrows over them. So when we look at the algebra, when we look at these symbols and we try to manipulate the symbols, we can recognize right away if we're doing something that makes sense or not. This one does not make sense. Now the way we make it make sense is we give this two meters a direction. So let's say between time zero and time one, this robot moves two meters in the, what is this, the southeast direction, directly southeast. Yeah, so that's a vector. It has a magnitude two meters and has a direction southeast. I'm gonna call that, that, magnet, or that, that change in direction and call it delta. And since it's a vector, I'm gonna put an arrow above it. And now instead of adding the scalar two meters, to the original position vector. I'm going to add the delta vector, this change in position vector. I'm gonna add these two things. Now I'm thinking it kind of makes sense, right? It makes sense logically. Pieces are fitting together. I'm adding two like quantities. I'm adding a vector to another vector. And when I take my old position vector, this one right here, here's my old position, the green dot, and add a change in position vector to it, I should get a new position, right? A new position. And what's the vector for the new position? Well, the new position vector is this one right here. It's the vector where we start at the origin and point to the new position. We draw the arrow and voila, there it is, right? This is my new position vector at time t1. Now my expression, now my mathematical expression for the new position vector, it works. And it also shows us how we interpret vector addition. When we take one vector and add it to another vector, what does that mean geometrically in terms of these arrows? We take the original position vector and we take the new change in position vector, we put the tail of the new change in position vector, we put the tail of the delta vector onto the tip of the original position vector, right? Arrange them tip to tail. And then the new vector, the sum, is the vector that goes from the tail of the original position vector to the tip of the new delta vector. And there's our new vector. So here we have the sum of the two vectors. And I write this sum symbolically as r plus delta, right? Now let me ask just a pure mathematical question for a second. What if I take the sum in the opposite order? Let's take the vector delta and add to that this r at t0. Yeah, what does that mean? Well, let's draw the delta vector again, right? So here's the delta vector. I'm drawing in blue this time. And since I'm starting my sum with the delta vector, I'm going to um, let's say move this thing over to the origin, right? That's where I'm starting. Oops, now I fixed it. So now I'm gonna take the vector r. Here's the r at t0. And I'm gonna move a copy of that blue vector. I'm gonna move the blue copy of that vector over here. So I have the same vector delta and the same vector r at t0. I've just rearranged them tip to tail in a different order. I put the delta first and then put the, the tail of vector r to the tip of vector delta. And when I arrange them this way and compare it to how I arranged them originally, I end up with the same sum, right? And this is nice. This is, tells us that this vector addition interpreted as arranging these, these vectors tip to tail and, and, and going from the, from the tail of the original vector to the tip of the second vector that that the order of the addition doesn't matter, right? And this is just like our normal addition with, with scalar numbers, right? Three plus two is the same as, uh, as two plus three. In, the same, in this case, r plus delta is the same as delta plus r. Vector addition is commutative. All right, so let's wrap up this video with a few takeaways. First of all, we, we discussed earlier that position is a vector. Position in this case was the position of this robot on the floor of our, of our apartment, if you will. By vector, I mean this quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. We can represent that thing as this arrow right here. But we have to in include in our definition of a vector of something of the zero vector, right? Something that can be at the origin. Okay, furthermore, number three here. A scalar is just a number. 
right? That two meters that I threw out earlier is just a number. It did not have a direction associated with it. So you cannot add a vector and a scalar together. It's strictly forbidden, prohibited, no vector plus scalar addition. So therefore, when we represent vectors and when we represent scalars symbolically, when we're doing uh, arithmetic with them, it's important to denote vectors as vectors. And we do that with little arrows above the symbols. You can also do it up in different ways too, but I'll do it with arrows above the, si above the symbols. Okay, the important thing is to distinguish them. It's so number six, vector addition has this tip to tail interpretation geometrically, right? We talked about it here. And furthermore, vector addition is commutative. In other words, that if I take a vector A and add a vector B to it, that's the same. I get, I get the same vector out of it if I take B and add it to A, right? Thinking about this tip to tail interpretation of vector addition enjoys this nice property that it's commutative. All right, and that wraps us up.